the best ATV news you ever saw. We'll show you how a group of Preston students took their education into their own hands. Van Gogh and bottle caps? I'll show you what these students are doing to recreate one of the most famous pieces of art. And do you feel safe in Logan City? A new report is out and the results may surprise you. If you're planning on doing any outdoor chopping this weekend, I'll tell you how the weather could affect it. Coming up on ATV Sports, one of your Aggie teams is top five in the country. And the Aggie football team had a Super Bowl moment during practice. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Tamara Bradley. And I'm Emily Landin. What would it take to get you to walk out of class? Our Victoria Cardin is live to tell you how students at Preston High School didn't like the new schedule the school board was trying to incorporate next year. So they planned a walkout. Victoria? Yeah, you know, the, press, the, pre, the students at Preston High have had the same schedule or a different schedule every year for the past five years and they were getting kind of tired of it. So they decided what they could do to make a difference. Let's take a look. These Preston High School students are chanting stop the hybrid schedule. They don't like the schedule that Preston High is trying to use for next year, so they organized a walkout. We just talked about it in class one time, like someone was just like, oh, we're doing a walkout at 1230, and so we're all like, okay. Um, I didn't think that anybody would actually walk out. I thought there'd probably be about 20 of us who actually did walk out. In fact, there were many more students than that. There were almost 200 people who walked out of class. They walked around their school block and even out to Main Street, still chanting. Preston High School students walked out of their classes and walked through these doors to prove a point that they didn't want their schedule to be changed anymore. Here at the district building, they hoped to talk to some people about it, but there was one problem. They were actually on their lunch break, and we had no idea. <laughs> the superintendent wasn't there. It was just the secretary, so it did no good. Yeah, I think it helped just to get the community, let them know about it and know what's going on. That was kind of the point of it, I guess. No, I think it made a difference. But I don't think that they'll change their final decision. Mm, I think it will. I think they'll at least look at it and think about it again. Because we're just kids. <laughs> They actually signed a petition because most of the students don't like it and they were able to get up to 500 signatures. Back to you in the studio, Tamara. The students attended a school board meeting that night to present their case, but the school board will ultimately determine what they're going to do. How safe do you feel in Logan? According to a recent study, you should feel pretty secure. The Congressional Quarterly Press has rated Logan, Utah the safest metro city in the nation. The CQ Press rates cities according to the number of type 1 crimes that are, reportedly, that are reported by local police departments all over the United States. Type 1 crimes include murders, rape, robbery, burglary, and aggravated assault. Logan police say that because of Logan being a college town, they are more likely re to receive reports of alcohol violations than assaults or burglaries. But police say they don't want to take all the credit for the ranking. Uh, but no, it isn't. It isn't all of us. I mean, there's only 60 Logan City police officers here. There's less county sheriffs out patrolling. There's even less North Park, even less Smithfield PD. So we don't have a lot of officers here. Here you have a valley of about 110,000 people. There's not enough officers to take care of everything. The police officers we interview say they don't win money or awards for ranking first, just bragging rights. The city of Logan played host to films from all over the world this past weekend as the Logan Downtown Alliance hosted its second annual Logan Film Festival. During the three-day event, in addition to screening films, festival goers were able to take part in workshops and listen to guest lecturers. Awards were given to the winners of seven categories ranging from short documentaries to animated films. 
This year's film festival was dedicated to the late USU professor Alan Hashimoto, who was heavily involved in getting the event off the ground. Thanks to a local TV station, Cash Rendezvous and ATV News are now available with just a click of the remote. Our Aaron Griffiths brings you the story. You probably watched ATV News right here on YouTube. Up until six months ago, that was your only option. But now, thanks to Top of Utah Television, you can now watch us right here in your living room. Well, we're a community channel, and so anything community-based, I would like to get on the channel. And ATV News and Cash Rendezvous, a lot of the great things that you're doing up at the university just fit really well into the mold that we're, we're trying to accomplish here at the station. But it wasn't until a few years ago that Top of Utah Television even began broadcasting. In uh, 2009, the FCC opened up a window for television, and I thought this is a perfect opportunity to take business to the next level, get a, a license and start broadcasting, you know. Um, so that's what I did, and uh, built the station out. Uh, we've got a control room, and we basically pull down feeds from satellite, uh, satellite networks and we put them through the system, beam them up to the mountain, and then broadcast to the valley. But the studio isn't just for video. It also serves as a photo studio. Uh, here in the studio, we have different backdrops and we have drapery that we can pull across for whatever venue we're looking at, whatever colors we want to kind of match. And uh, it's a pretty versatile studio. And so there you go, and then you have a, an Instaprop right there. You know, ever since I was really young, I started out in an electronics store, just sweeping the floors, taking out their garbage because of, you know, a strong interest in that area. And, you know, this TV station is just, it's been a dream of mine for a long time. And, you know, it, it's, it's awesome to see it come together. It didn't, it didn't just come together overnight. It took us a long time. It's been great. You know, sometimes I just get to sit back and say, wow, you know, we finally got this thing built. Aaron Griffiths, ATV News. You can view the programming schedule for Top of Utah TV by visiting topofutahtelevision.com. $2,500 can certainly buy a lot of things, especially for those who like to fish. Hiram State Park has been awarded a national grant to promote fishing at the park. The Let's Go Fishing grant allows Hiram State Park to expand its already existing fishing program by creating a free lending library of equipment. The program also consists of classes for people of all ages and abilities to learn how to shore, fish, or ice fish. Chris Haramoto says one of the goals for the program is to get people to the park. We want everyone to come out to visit the park and so we're just trying to do new activities, new fun things um, like the core program and like our, you know, the fishing uh, opportunities that we're putting together for everybody to come out and enjoy what we have. For more information on Hiram State Park's events, go to their website at stateparks.utah.gov. When we come back, we'll tell you how these Logan High School students could be getting some extra cash without robbing the bank. And not all pageant queens are created equal. We'll tell you what makes this group of beautiful ladies so special. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Did you win the iPad by filling out the library online survey? And it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. Welcome back to ATV News. Do you think you have some pretty great talents? Well, last weekend, USU hosted Utah's Miss Amazing pageant, where special needs women and children showcase their talents under the bright lights. Singing, dancing, and even karate moves are some of the talents performed at the Miss Amazing pageant. 
Contestants from age 5 to 35 competed for two days straight for the title and the crown. But directors say there is more to the pageant than just pretty dresses and gowns and crowns. These, contest these contestants are working hard, having fun, and making friends. Craft project, an optional lunch, and then pageant training, and the girls will go through an interview, and then we have a final show, which is definitely a lot of fun, and it's a way to boost self-esteem in a supportive environment. The cost for participants to enter the Miss Amazing pageant is five cans of food, which are later delivered to local charities and food banks by the pageant winner. How many smart are you? Zions Bank asked this question to high school students in the form of a contest. High school students around Utah made videos showing how they could be more money safe. And one group from right here in Logan are finalists in the competition. It's called a money vaccine, and these students say it won't help you at all. There isn't really a vaccine out there that can help you with money problems. People don't want to work for but how we need to and set up stuff in banks. The students made it for their video class. Both Casey Coe and Nick Curry were actors while Trent and Shane wrote the script. They thought their video was good but to make the top 10? It was, it's really cool that we made it this far. The point of the video is to help people make better financial decisions so you're saving your money here instead of spending your money on things that are nice but you may not need here. But do these guys even believe in their product? If they win the contest, they get $1,000. They have to split that three ways, but that's still a lot of money. Are they going to save or spend? It would be funny if we spent it all. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be as financially sound with it as our commercial suggests I should be. I do save. Probably not as much as I should, you know. I could save a little bit more. <laughs> but win or lose, the guys say they've had fun making the video. They're excited they've made it this far. I was really surprised that we made it to the finals. And say they'll be happy, whatever the outcome. Oh, the Russians. Always the Russians again. It feels pretty good. Top 10 in the state of Utah. You know, it's pretty cool. The group says they constantly work on videos in their class. They didn't think this was even one of their best, but they're excited about being finalists. It's possible that you know someone who is a member of the LGBT community. So what happened at the courthouse and around the country Monday night could have special meaning to you. A group of over 100 people gathered at the historic Cache County Courthouse to listen to speeches and hear music while standing vigil for marriage equality. Members of the LGBT community here in Logan gathered with their supporters in a show of unity as personal stories were told and candles were held, hoping for change. It, this is one of a... Uh, um nationwide series of events lighting the way toward equality. It's a series of candlelight vigils across the country on the eve of the Supreme Court uh, deliberating uh, two cases, one the federal... So in communities all around the country and in fact in two other communities in Utah, in Salt Lake City and in Provo, we have uh, members of the community who are gathering uh, to show their support for extending marriage rights uh, to same-sex couples. and I am called to um, uh, preach God's word and share the sacraments, and so one of the ways that I do that is by being a leader in the community and an advocate for justice and for love. The Supreme Court will deliberate the two cases Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Natural resources. We all use them every day, and yet how many people actually know what all they include? Well, it's Natural Resources Week here at Utah State, and our Jenna Lynn is outside live to tell us more about what the College of Natural Resources is all about. Jenna? Thanks, Tamara. Well, it is in fact Natural Resources Week here, and the Queenie College of Natural Resources has all sorts of activities planned, from a concert last night to a loggers ball Thursday, various lectures and more all to try to show people what their college is about. Something that I found out isn't always easy for them. The Quinney College of Natural Resources is definitely not the most extensive college on the USU campus. In fact, it only has three departments available for students. Natural Resources is the smallest college. We have a little over 350 undergraduates and with graduate students, we're at about 500. Out of the eight different colleges that encompass USU, Natural Resources is the smallest. You may be surprised finding out that this college is the smallest one here at Utah State, especially when we're living in a place that's so rich with these natural resources. It's kind of like underappreciated in a sense because 
we're an agricultural school and agriculture has a lot to deal with wild, wildland resources. So if we don't have this college, then we're not able to like produce future employees that'll be able to help manage the local areas around here. Even though we're located in an area with high demand for people in these fields, the college was almost dissolved late last year. That was until the Quinney family stepped in. They made a generous donation and saved our college, so we named it in their honor at the Quinney College of Natural Resources. The Quinneys have done a lot for this college and have promised to continue their support in the future, and the people in natural resources believe their future is promising. As the environment becomes more prominent in social issues, cultural issues and stuff, I definitely see our college becoming more prominent and seeing our majors more sought after, so I can easily see us expanding in the future. I think this college has plenty of room to grow here in Logan, and people in natural resources are hopeful that this week will help them do that. Back to you, Tamara. Thanks, Jenna. If you'd like to find out more about the college, the Natural Resources Building is located on campus just north of the library. After the break, Marie Tifa will be here with your Cache Valley weather report. It's currently 45 degrees and overcast here at Utah State University in Logan. We'll be right back. Did you win the iPad by filling out the library online survey? And it only took you five minutes? You can win an iPad too by filling out the library online survey. Let your voice be heard. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Well, the weather seems to be all over the place this last weekend. It has. It felt like all four seasons last week. But Marie Tietze is live in the studio with us for our weather forecast. Marie, is this up and down weather going to keep sticking around? You know what, it is going to keep sticking around, but it's not going to feel like it's going to keep sticking around. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the rest of the nation is seeing right now. As you can see, we might be expecting a few snowstorms in Utah this week, um, coming in from the north and a little bit from Nevada and the coast over here. The east side is going to be experiencing a lot, heavy snowfall actually over here and little to no precipita precipitation on the east coast. Um, there are some stagnant winds up here that is causing a little bit of some wind gusts coming through Utah which may be causing these snowstorms. Let's go ahead and look at these images that I found of the wind gusts. Over here, the blue and the purple, those wind gusts are, ch are they're traveling 10 to 15 miles per hour. So they're going pretty fast up here in north where, we're, where we are and down here in the south. This was taken at 2 p.m. today and it's only gotten worse. It's definitely moving south. And the yellow means that these winds are moving up to 20 miles per hour. So they're experiencing a lot of wind storms. Let's go ahead and look. And even though, well, even though it has been windy, it's been pretty warm today in the state nation statewide, sorry. So um, northern Utah up here, it's, about, it's been about 50 as a high. Salt Lake, it's 60 as a high. And southern Utah, it's 66, which I am very jealous of, considering 50 is our high today. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening in our neck of the woods at our five-day forecast. Today, we have a high of 48 and a low of 33. Then tomorrow we have a high of 52 and a low of 30. And like I said, there's probably going to be a high percentage, percent chance of snow today and tomorrow night. Um, and Thursday, we've got a high of 55 and a low of 34. Uh, Friday, a high of 57 and a low of 34. And Saturday, a high of 55 and a low of 32. So we're going to be experiencing pretty nice weather, you guys. It's going to be pretty good. 
Oh, I'm excited. That sounds like it'll be nice for once. I can't wait to actually see the snow go away yeah. for me. Yeah, I really hope it so does. Good. But even though it is going to be nicer, it's going to be windy and it might make it a little bit more cold. Dang it. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Marie. Thank you. Well, that's good to hear. Coming up in sports, though, Courtney Robinson will take a look at the top five plays of the NCAA men's tournament. Stay tuned. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Welcome to your ATV Sports. I'm Courtney Robinson. Well, all good things must come to an end. And last Thursday, the women's basketball team did just that, ending their first season of the Jerry Fink era, losing to South Dakota in the WBI tournament. Aggie junior Jennifer Schlott wasn't going down without a fight, putting up 25 points and 8 assists. Here she is right here, shot after shot, getting buckets the whole entire night. She was on fire. Senior Devin Christensen played her last game wearing an Aggie jersey. She netted a solid 16, but it wasn't enough to hold off the Coyotes. Missing 9 from behind the arc, the Aggies were never able to come back. This first year group too is a group of big hearts and hardworking kids that never gave up, and uh, I'll remember that my first first year here with these girls. And so uh, we'll have a little different look next year. Head coach Fink says he is looking forward to the next signing of his three big stars, and that they will continue him with great success in the Mountain West Conference. The OSU gymnastics team is back from the WAC championship meet that was held last Saturday in Cedar City. The Aggies took fourth overall with Boise State finishing first, Denver second, and Sacramento State earning third. As a team, they scored a season high in points and several of the girls earned individual highs. Three Aggies, Sarah Landis, Paige Jones, and Stephanie Daly qualified for regionals, which is in Ohio, on April 6th. Landis and Jones will be competing in every event and Daly will be performing on beam. You remember when the lights went off during the Super Bowl game. Crazy, right? Well, the Aggie football team was up pretty early yesterday in full pads for their fourth spring practice when something similar happened. The team is pretty familiar with practicing before the sun comes up at 6 a.m., but yesterday it was a little bit darker than usual. Around about 7 a.m., position groups were working on individual drills when suddenly we were taken back to the Superdome. All the power and lights cut off instantly in the lob and door facility, but a little darkness wasn't stopping your Aggies. Here are the whiteouts right here, continuing like nothing even happened. They didn't even seem phased. The outage was due to a timer that wasn't reset and the lights kicked on about 10 minutes later. The Aggies will hold their next practice tomorrow morning and their first scrimmage will be on Thursday. So how's everyone's bracket looking? I know that I'm in first out of ATV News, and there have definitely been some big Cinderella teams that showed up to the big dance. Let's take a look at some of the top plays so far after the third round. At number five, Victor Oladipo hits a big three-pointer late, avoiding upset from Temple, sending Indiana to the Sweet 16. Let's take a look at it again, right here at the top of the key with 14 seconds left. His unique combination of explosive athleticism, fearless defense, and efficient shooting draw comparisons to D-Wade. Number four, LaSalle's Tyrone Garland gets the tough layup to go with just 2.5 seconds, giving LaSalle the lead and ultimately the victory over Old Miss. Number three, Aaron Kraft's buzzer beater. Kraft with the three right here. The three saved the Buckeyes past a potential upset by Iowa State. Here it is again with a 3.2 seconds left. 
Kraft is definitely one of the top guards in the nation. He's going after Arizona's Mark Lyons on Thursday. It's going to be a great matchup. Number two, Adrian running down the court. No one's even open guarding him. He throws it down in the paint versus Memphis. Michigan State moves on to the Sweet 16. Let's take another look again. Nice pass right here from Keith Appling. Paint above everyone's head. Here we go one more time. And the number one goes to no one other than Florida Gulf Coast Chase Fear with his one-handed alley-oop against Georgetown. This is the Cinderella team that has shocked the country and ruined everyone's bracket, of course. They're the first number 15 seed in the NCAA tournament in history to make it to the round of 16. Out of over 8.15 million entries in the ESPN Fantasy Bracket Challenge, there are currently no perfect brackets left, but I'm number one in mine, so that's all that matters. The USU hockey team did for a national championship. They fell short at the American Collegiate Hockey Association in the national tournament in St. Louis. After finishing pool play, the Aggies faced Michigan State in the semifinals. The Aggies couldn't hold off the Spartans, losing 6-2. This season was one of the most successful in the team history, and the Aggies finished with a 25-5 record and reaching the semifinals of the national tournament. So how are y'all's tourna bracket tournaments looking? Are y'all doing pretty well? or Doing okay. I called a couple <laughs> big upsets that were kind of my successes. I think California and Harvard, so it was good. Wow, yeah, I didn't even fill out a bracket, so I just get to watch, and it's win-win either way for That's me. Okay. That's a little great. less stressful that way, right. but <laughs> thanks, Courtney. Thanks, Courtney. Well, coming up after the break, we'll tell you what Van Gogh, bottle caps, and elementary school students have in common. Stay tuned. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? Something me? I did. Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night is easily one of the most famous paintings, but one teacher decided to introduce the work to her elementary students in a unique way. We went to Birch Creek Elementary to see what had the students blowing their lids off and bringing them to class. Has our mural changed a lot since the last time you've been here? Making Starry Night from Vincent Van Gogh with bottle caps. And it's not just bottle caps, it's a variety of different plastic lids so that we could have a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. Most of them are glued down, just not all of them. Here. Okay, who's next? The size is really big, it's like 10 feet by 8 feet. The other artwork is totally different because you draw, this isn't drawing. So I'm trying to show them that they can think outside the box and use different supplies to create beautiful artwork. And until we got at least halfway through the, the week and started seeing even more colors going down, they're like, wow, this is so cool because it's actually turning into artwork now. Make sure these go right up next to it, and we got to work these right on the edge, okay? Okay, so let's see that. Okay, has everyone had a chance to glue down now? Yeah. It's really pretty. Did you think you could do artwork with bottle No. Now, do you know that you can? Yeah. The mural is almost finished, Nish says. They plan to unveil it for the school on May 9th at their art show. Thanks for joining us today for ATV News. We'll be back on Thursday. Have a great day, Cash Valley.